most of the time when patients come to me complaining of fungal toenails, it will be most of the nails are all 10. But every now and then, I will see just one rogue nail. Here you can see the thickness of the nail, the discoloration, and the amount of buildup on the underside of the nail. Here you can see I'm trying to remove the subungual debris with a blunt curette. The nail is very loose, that's called lysis. As the nail plate becomes more and more detached from the underlying nail bed, fluid from bathing and sweating gets trapped underneath the nail. Therefore, the fungus is able to continue and to grow and thrive. This can continue for years, as it did in this patient. The toenail was still very loose and there was still a lot of subungual debris. So I had to trim more of the nail back to expose the nail bed so I could continue to clean it up. Trimming away more of the nail plate showed the extent of the damage to the nail bed. There is quite a bit of hyperkeratosis or callus-like buildup of the skin underneath the nail. There's a whole lot of subungal debris and discoloration. It's very difficult to remove this with the curette. At this point, a scalpel is necessary to remove the hyperkeratotic or the callus-like skin underneath the nail. It is very important to remove as much of this hyperkeratotic and fungal skin as possible so that when it's time to apply medication to it, medication will have less to work against, you will have a better chance of a complete cure. Why not just remove the entire nail and be done with it? Well, first of all, that doesn't get rid of the entire problem. The problem is just not the nail plate. Infection is also in the nail bed and the nail root. The base of the nail plate is firmly attached to the nail bed in this patient. So removing the entire nail would require a surgical procedure. That in and of itself does have its discomforts. Local anesthesia has to be injected into the patient's toe, and that's never fun for the patient. Then there's the procedure of removing the nail, which can cause a little bit of bleeding. And then afterwards at home, the patient has to go through soaps and daily wound care of the toe to make sure no infection ensues. The number one reason why I do not remove toenails for fungal infection is because it does not speed up the process. A new nail still has to replace the old nail, whether you leave some nail intact or whether you remove the entire nail, that process is still the same. So why take the patient through the hassle of getting a surgical procedure and going through the healing process of that when the process for clearing up the nail, that time will still be the same either way it goes. And medication can have the same outcome as removing the nail. Matter of fact, just removing the nail without any treatment is not a guarantee to solve the problem. So the treatment done on this visit is not enough. The patient will have to routinely file the nail at home to keep the thickness down and to decrease the fungal count. Periodic visits to the office will also have to take place every two to three months for observation and more debridement if necessary. Here you can see that the nail bed was cleaned up very well. As always, I send samples of the nails to the lab for fungal identification. Here in this slide, you can see the fungus, the little purple splotches. And here is the DNA test results that show the exact name of the organism. So now I know exactly which medication choices I have to cure this patient. This is Kevin Jefferson, the DC Foot Doctor. Thank you very much for watching this video. Like it with a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you will know when a new video has been uploaded. Share it with your family and friends. If you leave a comment or a question, it may be featured in a future video. But most importantly, take care of your feet.